on this episode, India comes back. Yay. The Ask Gary B Show. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 217 of the Ask Gary V Show. I feel like we're in a 250, you know, 2015 zone where like we're actually doing shows day in and day out and there's no other characters uh, on the set. And India is back, which I think makes everybody very happy, me especially. It's good to see you. You had a good 4th of July? Yeah, it's great. Very nice to hear. Uh, I thought yesterday's episode was really good. Thought I was zoned in. You didn't watch it. You were like shaking your no, head. No, I did. I watched Facebook Live because I was like, oh my God, they're doing... Like the, I was like, the questions, I think they used the wrong part of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're like worried. Uh, awesome. All right, India, I, I miss this very much. Yeah. When's the last time you think we did this? That's a good. Just a normal episode? Like a normal episode where we got to do our little I don't thing know. here. A while ago. Feels like a while. Yeah. Too many All right, ago. you ready? Yes, ready. So let's get into the show. Oh. That's good. Like riding a bike. <laughs> like riding a bike. I don't even know if I like bikes. Is this a true fact? This is how Mike. Yes, you, this is a little fun fact. AJ does not know how to ride a bike. Though he's, I think he's learning this summer. I'm curious, I have to ping him. I haven't heard anything, so I still don't think my brother, who's 29 years old, knows how to ride a bike. From Abdur? Abdur. Abdur asks, if you're starting from scratch, what metrics would you look at to determine success? Uh, if you're starting from scratch, what metrics would you look at um, in measuring success? Yes. Uh, money in and profit, post money in. Um, this is, and, and I'm actually making a joke, but I'm being serious. It's so funny, uh, I just had a business meeting. I think a lot of people have metrics for the sake of metrics, marketing for the sake of marketing. If you have a business, uh, the only metric that you should be paying attention to is your top line revenue and your profit at the end of the day that can afford to pay your costs that are driving your business. Now. If you're very, very early on, you wanna see traction, but I think the reason I'm jumping on this question is we now live in a culture where so many people think um, the following, which is they've been affected by Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. If you get tens of millions of followers, it doesn't matter that you don't make money, you eventually become a billionaire. The problem is that works for seven companies. That is not the norm. Most people, try to, and this is what's gonna happen over the next decade, my friends, you will see, and over the next three years, you'll see an enormous amount of companies that went and tried to get 10,000, 100,000, a million users, didn't get there, weren't the hot product, the unicorn, the once in a generation business, the once in a generation business, and they ran out of money. And then you go out of business. So, what I really wanna ground this first question in in practicality, the only metric a business person should be understanding is their cash flow. (laughs) Money in, money out. How do you build momentum? Is it heading in the right direction? I'm very proud that AJ and I and and the senior leadership that helped us along the way, we built an actual business here. VaynerMedia isn't a valuation. VaynerMedia is revenue and profit. And I, I do think that we have gotten way too into users and mentions and the, the one that bothers me the most, number of followers and we've got away from what are you doing. Do you know how many people have come up to me and they're like, yeah, I'm struggling, you know, like, like I, this is actually, re- you know, and DRock, you're with me. It really hit me during that one kid coming up to me in, in Colorado and I don't want to pick on the kid, but like, like everybody thinks that amassing a following on social media is a business. Amassing a following on social media is a platform for you to create a business on top of. A business is a functioning organization that sells something that you make profit in so that you can sustain that business and grow. Joe. Joe. Joe asks, you say to be ourselves 100%. What if you have a troubled past that you overcame? Hide it or embrace it? Listen, I mean, you know, this is a tough question, something I think a lot about. I I do think, and you've been hearing from me, meditation, mental health, I think the next frontier, the next 50 years of society, within the business context and within society, gun control, all these other things, we're gonna be talking more and more about the brain, mental health, mental status. You know, there are people in this world that come from such tough beginnings. We talk a lot about poverty and opportunity, I think, because we talk about entrepreneurship. We don't talk, I don't talk a lot about, you know, you were raped as a child. Your parents were murdered. You know, some of these really extreme difficult things. I don't understand 
or no what Joe's troubled past or if he's referring for a friend or for himself. I think we all have different versions of a troubled past. Like some people would say I got bullied and that was my troubled past. Others would say I was sexually molested and that's my troubled Like These all vary and so Joe I w- what I would say is I have no interest in sitting here on a high horse and deploying generic blanket statements. I think we should be, I do think that being yourself 100% is something that people are attracted to. I think all of us, in, in the same way that America actually doesn't hate the crime they hate when you try to cover it up because we know that you're not being authentic and you're trying to trick me. I think that's the same reason we react so well to people that go very far, that own up to things, that are super transparent, that are willing to go there. And so what I would say is, you know, you should challenge yourself to go as far down that funnel as you can because it is absolutely an attractive quality that creates opportunity, happiness, business opportunities for one. However, I don't think you have to air your dirty laundry and I do think that there's a lot of help and and many other things that people have to do to be able to share things. I I do not feel comfortable sitting here saying yes, share your deepest, darkest things because maybe you're not emotionally ready. I don't know you on an individual basis. What I can tell you is that every day I try to push harder in exposing more of my thoughts and exposing more of my truths and exposing more of my weaknesses and exposing more uh, of my scars and it's a struggle for me because that you guys have seen over the last daily Beast and things that I don't spend a lot of time on my weaknesses or my past. From yesterday's episode's first question, I don't hold grudges. I don't have a shit list. It's because I just don't believe in containing negativities and so I, the only reason at this point in my life I'm trying to think about my flaws or my struggles is I want to give you, the people that have decided to give me your time, I feel a sense of responsibility to all of you that are giving me your time. How many people are on there right now? 1.5. For the 1,500 of you right now that are on Facebook Live, I feel a sense of responsibility that in the middle of the day or if you're in Europe later in the day, the fact that right now 1,500 of you could be doing something completely different but I have been gifted your attention which I think is the number one asset. I'm trying to challenge myself. I'm trying to challenge myself to expose some of my weaknesses and things of that nature but it's a real struggle for me. You know, and so I'm almost the reverse. Like, like I can't even like begin to think about my tough upbringing or different things. Like I don't think about the bad things. Like I think about them. I deal with them. They're reality. I don't dwell on them. I spit them out and I move forward. Um, I think it's a very personal question, Joe. I think it's like work-life balance. I don't, I don't, I don't have any interest in sitting on this show trying to force somebody right now that had a very horrible thing happen to them and they're going to write a blog post about it tomorrow and they weren't emotionally ready and they can't deal with the repercussions of putting it out there. That is not my place. Um, but I will say to everybody, you know, if you can get there, I do think there's a lot of healthiness to it. Thanks, Cindy. From Matthew. Yeah, that was. I mean, that's a you know, it's a heavy subject matter, and I and I do think that one thing in the evolution of this show is, um, you know, there's a lot of tactics we can talk about how to use a filter and this and that. But you know, I you know, and it could bore you, but um, and it could become repetitive. But I do think this is a mental game. I think life is a mental game. I think it's much more about the brain uh, than people realize, and and I want to continue to push angles of it because I think it brings people happiness. Speaking of tactical, Ta- from Matthew. I want to go tactical. I like to mix it up. Matthew asks, how do you create content as a retailer selling someone else's brand? Ah, I remember this one. I sent this to you. I like this one because I wanted to go tactical. You know, it's so funny. Talk about the yin and yang of me. Like, I also don't want this to get too heady and philosophical. I want to go tactical. Anybody who's a retailer that's struggling with like, wait a minute, I sell sneakers, so am I going to make Nike content or Adidas content or Under Armour content and put it out? I want to, who is this again? Matthew, read it one more time because, guys, check this out. I think this is interesting. How? How do you create content as a retailer selling someone else's brand? Right, this is so interesting. As a retailer, you sell somebody else's brand. That's the definition of a retailer unless you're selling retail, your product, and you're the, you know, the Under Armour store, right? So, um, <laughs> I, I, I really got a kick out of this question. I think it's when people are looking at the lens the wrong way. We live in a world now where brands are creating content for themselves at scale and I wonder if Michael, Michael right? Yeah, Matthew, 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 sorry, thank you. <laughs> Ma- if Matthew is looking at this wrong because he sees the optics of brands creating content, if it's what you sell, you create content. Wine Library creates content 
of other brands all the time because we are a retailer and we're trying to sell this Pinot Grigio. It is not our Pinot Grigio, it is somebody else's, but we're creating content because we're making margin and we've chosen in the world of business to be a retailer. Matthew, the way you create content if you are a retailer of other people's brands is to create content of other people's brands. I, you know, it's what you do. Like, if you sell other people's, you know, brands, you make content. Now, what you could be asking in more detailed oriented back to being practical is you may have to follow guidelines of a brand when you're producing content. I think you need to be conscious of putting those brands in a good light because they're your supplier and they are more than capable of discontinuing you selling that product. So you have to be political about what that is, but you also have to find a different angle that is your angle from the brands. I think one of those places is price. You know, most brands are not gonna price because they know their retailers are selling things uh, at different prices, so their content in the ecosystem is more jab-oriented branding. You could actually be more in the right hook business. This Pinot Grigio got 90 points from the Wine Spectator and is on sale for eleven ninety nine. So you could, you know, those are kind of things a retailer does. You could also create content of that product within your retail store and so you're showing it in that environment. Again, another thing brands won't normally do because they don't want to allude to being favorite, picking a favorite from one retailer to another. So use the advantages you have that you know the mothership brand won't do, but you can possibly do. And I think for all of you, now leveling this up, back to the theme of yesterday and trying to do that more in this show, I think, one, I think way too many people dwell on what they can't do instead of realizing what they can do, right? So focus on the things that make you uniquely you and do the things that you know that other people can't do, whether that's your partners, like a supplier and a retailer, or that's your competitors. They happen to be in this state. You happen to be, I mean, you happen to be in Colorado and you have pretty mountains. Use that to your advantage. You know, like I can't make mountain content here. You know I hate mountains. Link it. Um, from DJ Young Legend. That's such a good recall. Yeah. I wonder how many people watching right now actually know what we're talking about. Go ahead. Um, DJ Young Legend. DJ Young, Young Legend. Legend. Do you advice- think I should come up with a DJ name? Yes. <laughs> I love how you're all like, yes. Of course. What advice would... Have you seen Marshmallow? What? It, yeah, in the EDM world, Marshmallow. Oh. Very smart stuff. Right? Like from the whole branding and... I mean, you're proud of Tyler? Yeah, that's cool. Because he's cool. Yeah, I know. He's I, I know EDM. He knows EDM. Do you know EDM? No. Did you watch my Cruella episode? Cool. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> DJ Young Legend asks, what advice would 40-year-old Gary give 28-year-old Gary? Uh, I was trying to remember why I picked this question. I, I really curated a bunch of questions, by the way. Uh, by the way, I want to, re- you know, I'm feeling a renaissance here, so a freshness of not having all these characters uh, on with me. Uh, really looking for more questions. A lot of you have not asked in a long time. A lot of you ask often. And, you know, as a matter of fact, here's what I want you to do. Use the hashtag AskGaryVee, but also for the, the old timers, the hustlers, that have not had the luck or the serendipity of having one of their questions on the show, uh, don't lie, because lying is the devil, and I'm gonna make Indy and team actually do the homework. Uh, for all of you, when you ask your next question that you want on the next show, which hopefully will be tomorrow, uh, or next day, or what have you, next week, whatever, um, do hashtag AskGaryVee like we do on Twitter or, uh, or Instagram, but also then in the copy, put X, how many times have you asked for a question, to be on the show and have not had it. So, meaning if you asked a question 43 times but your question's been on the show, don't use the X. But if you are a virgin to the question being on the show, but you've asked 84 times, it might be a nice time to like swim up. Now, there may be a reason you haven't been picked because you know, there could be people that just ask crappy questions. Talent is a variable. You are bad at asking questions. But we're gonna push a little harder and try to get you on the videos. show. We love videos. We love videos. Uh, DJ Young Legend, Young Legend asked, asked 40 and 28 year old self. And again, I know a lot of you, DRock, you in India, probably more so, maybe even Stefan at this point, you guys know me so well that you probably, to keep yourself not bored of filming these things, start answering what you think I'm gonna say. And I think you think I'm gonna go down the traditional path of like ha- hang out with more chicks, have more funds on the weekend, all that. That's where I've gone cliche. You got a place where not you're about at to go? 28. I can give you like not a 28, a 22? Yeah, yeah. It's funny you said that. Maybe that's why I picked it. 28 was a very interesting year for me. It's when I got engaged. Um, I'm gonna stun everybody right now. I would tell 28 year old Gary to work more. And I'm gonna throw you for a loop. 
what a lot of you don't know about 28 year old Gary is 28 year old Gary was working nine to seven. Like I'm really sad that my life went this way. Here's what I mean by that. From tw- as much as I hustled, as much as I hustled 22 to 32, I work way more now. And to be very honest with you, that stinks because I have a family. And at 22 to 30, or 22 to 28, I had nobody but myself, right? And so what I would tell 28-year-old Gary is in two years you're gonna drive on the highway and you're gonna look at yourself and you're gonna say that you're full of shit and that you're not hustling. I know that just came out, right? And I know that we just did content on that. And so why wait two years? In the same way that 38-year-old Gary started taking care of himself instead of waiting to 40, which was my main plan, I would say to 28-year-old Gary, hey bro, you're gonna realize in 24 months that you're not doing the actions it's gonna take. You're doing everything right if you wanna be very successful and live a very nice life and and be rich and all that, but you're nowhere close to all-time legacy and not even in the same realm of buying the New York Jets. So get your shit together uh, and do it now and I wish I would because that would have been 24 more months of the hustle that's executed so much happiness for me. Um, And so, you know, no question, not regret, because I don't look backwards, I don't let negativity, but it would be convenient if I was working 20 hour days and traveling 22 to 32 versus now when it's coming out of Misha and Xander and Lizzie, you know, it's tough. So that's what I would say, I would say, hey, this is how it's gonna play out. Might as well get a couple more years in now because if I stop going extreme, and by the way, and this is a fun thing for you guys here, I am absolutely in the early stages in my own brain of not traveling to the level that I've been traveling. You know, the kids are now seven and four. Just a lot more functions. They're just, I want to spend more time with them. These are formative years. Like, so, you know, if, if let's say I decide to like really slow it down at a significant level at 43. Let's say that's my prediction right now. You know, well then, I could, you know, 28 could have made it that 41 is kind of how I think about it. It's all just mass numbers. And, you know, everybody's going to jump in the comments and say different things. Of course, of course. Um, and that's not wrong. But 28 year old Gary hustled but hustled the way a lot of you hustled pre-seeing Daily V and Snapchat, which is you thought you were the best hustler you knew, and then you got to see how I do it, and you're like, Jesus. And that's who that guy was. And he worked hard and whatever, but he wasn't this guy. Cool. I'm curious what 60-year-old Gary's gonna say to 40-year-old Gary. More car, you think so? Do you think, honestly, without a joke, do you think like, like on a serious kick, I'm actually a little bit nervous. This is me, like let's go into like I never speak to my fears here. This could be interesting. I'm not, sh- you know, I'm very conscious that it becomes like a speed junkie, right? Like I don't even know what it would be like to work nine to eight. Like, like you have to understand the once in a blue moon when I walk home at like walk into my apartment like. I'm talking three times a year during the work days. I mean, obviously I take holidays and all that, but like to go, to walk tonight, to walk into my apartment at 8 p.m. feels awkward. And like, whoa, like, like I remember, this is not a joke. There was some funny day that happened maybe three or four months ago when I came home at 9.45 p.m. and I walk in, I hear Lizzie in the room, she's like, what are you doing home so early? And I was like, Jesus, <laughs> like, like 9.45, it hit me hard. I was like 9.45 is later, of, there, there are enormous amounts of people, there are enormous amount of you that are watching this right now that will never come home that late in the history of your work career. You know? Anyway, oh, so uh, back to what I was like fearful of. I'm worried that like, like the action is so intense that like, like it's a detox. Like I actually already know for me to cut back what I just alluded to, I'm gonna have to have a detox year. Like it's gonna take me a lot of time. Three, four, five, that'll be some fun daily V's. I'll be like in the corner like, <laughs> like, like it's gonna take me six, it's gonna take me six months to like, if I wanna come home, my, my weird intuition is it's not that I'm gonna come home at seven, it's that I'm gonna come home at five or six, spend an hour, 90 minutes with the family and then go back out. That's my intuition. That's my main plan for the next move. I think, because the kids are gonna go to sleep early anyway. Like later, you know, seven, eight years from now, like when they're actually up to eight, 10, 11, 12. That's why when you say go out, you're not like going out, you're like 
to work, going you know? Like, <laughs> and then I'm going to go back out. Like, right, back out. <laughs> to work. All right. All right. Yeah. From Nasser. Nasser. Great. Hello, Hello Gary, Gary V. My name, My name is uh, uh, Nasser Abdelli. I'm from, from Algeria, Algeria Northern, Northern Africa. Africa. And this, and is, this my is my hometown. Amazing. My hometown. He loves English peas. So I'm a teacher of English. I'm putting out content on social media. This is awesome. And, like and uh, I don't have any questions, questions to ask about that because you have to answer all of them. So this house has been taken care of. Thank you. You're welcome. So oh, he did thumbs up too. Skydiving. And after, and after 200, 200 jumps, jumps, we'll be able to put on a wingsuit and, and jump, jump with it over our, our national monument here, here in Algiers. I'm, I'm going, going to be the first, first wingsuit pilot, pilot in, the in the country. And this, this is, is going to be the first, first wingsuit jump, jump ever performed. performed. Height scared the crap out of me. I'm terrified watching that. Okay, okay, so my first question is about blended personal brands. So not that that exists, but my question is, how can I manage the education and extreme sports you know, for a lot of you follow me and you've heard time and time again, one channel, one channel, don't, but my friend, I'm glad you asked this. This is the nuances. This is why this show is so great. I would actually, and I'm, it's funny, but I would do separate channels and I'll tell you why. Your first place that you established is so utilitarian. Wine Library TV, though about wine, though about information about wine, still had a lot to do with my personality, with Gary, which then allowed me to kind of blend stuff. You're doing hardcore utilitarian education content. What I don't know is how much it is of you, my friend. If, you know, looking through there, you seem very charismatic. So if you feel like a lot of people watch the first thing because of your charisma, then I think you can blend it in one. But if you think they're there just to learn English and it's a utility for them, you could start having a, a schizophrenic issue at hand when you start showing them the skydiving stuff. What I would say is the following, for you, this is why individual advice matters, I would create separate channels. I would use your personal Instagram, your personal Twitter, like I think you can mix them, but I would, from a YouTube standpoint, I would have them as separate channels. And I would once in a while mix them in social and maybe even once in a while mix, like maybe one video of like, by the way, like I would almost call it by the way, BTW. This is something else I do. This way it's you know, kind of almost a commercial within your other channels. You can cross pollinate. Um, that would be my strategy. Nice, I need to show you the ending of this video. What? The ending of this video, I need to show you. So it's pretty hilarious. Gary, Gary, one last, one last thing. Okay, I'll okay. show you the one. <laughs> the banana. Gary, Gary you're, not, you're, you're not, the not the only one. Very fast. Very fast. We might have to have a competition. Looks like we're going to Algeria. Oh, he, no, he killed him. It's great. It's great. Good show. Good show. What were the themes of today? Uh, question of the day. What would you tell yourself if you went back in time 10 years and could give that person advice? You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering.